Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for April 4th, 2024. I hope you'll excuse me today, but I'm going to go into a rant because I'm sick and tired of what's being done in your name by the puppets of the military industrial financial complex who run the United States, who I should say are running the United States into the ground and isolating us internationally through their continuous activities of promoting war and economic policies that lead to the destruction of nations and a commitment to destroy the sovereignty of any nation that objects to the policies of the so-called rules-based order. I know you've heard me talk about this before. There is no such thing as a rules-based order, especially since the rules are arbitrary and they're being made up to defend the interests of those who see the United States as a sole superpower, which has the right to enforce loyalty from its so-called allies, including the United Kingdom and the European Union, to impose a global central banker's dictatorship. And that's what has me extremely angry and agitated because they're taking us into a potential for World War III and nuclear war and none of you have voted for that. Some of the neocons in the, in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party have. And the two parties as a whole are really just one party, a war party, an austerity party, a neocon, neoliberal gang who marched to the beat played by the drummers of the City of London and Wall Street. As I said, that doesn't reflect your interests or mine. So I'm going to rant a little bit, but I'm going to explain to you why it is that this crowd that's running the policy right now must be removed. Now, in particular, the, the figure who stands out the most, the most ubiquitous, is Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, who, with his monotone and his soulless eyes, tries to convince you that he's the paragon of virtue protecting the world from chaos through the enforcement of the so-called rules-based order. For example, he pretends to care for the children who are being brutalized, murdered, and starved by his policies, the policies of the United States under Biden, under uh, Sullivan, and, and his. That's the problem we're dealing with here. Now, it's not just the Biden administration, because there are too many Republicans who support this as well. But what are they doing? Let's start with this killing of children. Children have been killed in Afghanistan by the sanctions and the theft of, of money from the Afghan government. Children have been killed in Syria from the Caesar sanctions, which deny children food and medicine. Uh, children are being killed now in Gaza not just by starvation and, and, and disease, but by bombing and shooting, the killing of more than 15,000 children by the Israeli forces, armed and funded by the U.S. government. Now, it's not surprising that, that Blinken would be indifferent to the killing of children. His mentor was Madeleine Albright, who bragged that 500,000 Iraqi children dying because of U.S. sanctions was worth it to get rid of Saddam Hussein. The same Albright who probably right now is rotting in hell next to Henry Kissinger and Lord Rothschild. Now, the, you see Blinken crying crocodile tears over the lifeless bodies of children in Palestine while continuing to supply the weapons to the Netanyahu government and the political cover and the money to a government which is doing the killing. He's attacking Putin for not recognizing international borders. Well, U.S. troops are still illegally present in Iraq and in Syria after there were lies spread to justify the invasion of those countries and the destruction of those nations. And Blinken continues to defend the lies. He speaks of defending democracy and freedom in Ukraine, while he and his allies, 
Hillary Clinton, who he worked for in 2016, Victoria Nuland, uh, and Biden, who coordinated the Ukraine operation under Obama, they were the ones who were behind the coup in Kyiv in, in 2014, which overthrew a democratic government. How is that democracy? If you don't like a government, you overthrow them? That's the policy of the so-called rules-based order. They lied about supporting a peace agreement that was crafted at the Minsk Accords. And they, why did they lie? To buy time to arm and train Ukrainian forces to deploy them against Russia. This has nothing to do with defending Ukraine. The Ukrainian Azov Battalion and others were carrying out a genocide against people in Donbass because the Donbass population, the Eastern Ukrainian population, objected to the coup. And when they objected to it, they were subjected to bombing and shooting. More than 14,000 people were killed in that. And when Putin kept appealing to the West, stop it, let's have some kind of a, a change, including the Minsk Accord, which supposedly would give some limited autonomy to those people. We find out later that Merkel and Hollande, the Chancellor of Germany and the President of France, who were supposed to be the enforcers of the Minsk Accord, knew it was a lie to buy time to arm Ukraine. And we talk about the Russians lying. How do you think that looks to the rest of the world? Then you have the sabotage of the attempt in the end of March and early April 2022, within a month after the launch of the special military operation by Putin. Uh, you had a treaty that was agreed upon in Istanbul, agreed upon by the Zelensky government and the Putin government, and it was sabotaged. And as a result, maybe 400,000 to 500,000 Ukrainians have died because of the refusal to have a negotiated peace. That's the so-called rules-based order. Now, meanwhile, Blinken and, and his uh, allies, the puppets of the military-industrial financial complex, have given more than $110 billion of taxpayers' money to the kleptocrats of Ukraine around Zelensky and to the military industrial financial complex corporate oligarchs in the United States. And they're trying to get 60 billion more for Ukraine plus 14 billion more for Israel. Is that what you voted for when you voted in the last election? To have your tax dollars go to the hands of oligarchs who are killing children and committing genocide? If not, it's time you do something about it. Now, then you have the expression of sympathy from the Biden administration to the victims of terrorism in the Crocus Music Hall attack uh, last month in Moscow. Well, meanwhile, there's evidence emerging that it was a possible US MI6 hand operating through Ukraine which ran the so-called ISIS-K terror operation. Now, whether you can pin down or not a US MI6 hand, and I, I'd urge you to look at Kit Clarenberg's most recent article on that, what we do know is that the US helped create ISIS and Al-Qaeda going back to Brzezinski's policy and Kissinger's policy in the 1980s and George H.W. H. Bush's policy in the 1980s of arming the so-called Islamic terrorist movement in Afghanistan to fight against the Russians. And then again, in Iraq, after the illegal invasion in 2003, ISIS essentially was created inside the prison camps maintained by the Americans. So if you look at the so-called war on terror, what has it been? A war on uh, free speech in the United States and a defense of so-called moderate rebels who are conducting mass murder in Syria and continuing to destabilize much of the world. And now deployed into Moscow to kill more than 140 citizens in the recent Crocus murder spree. <clears throat> now, why did this happen? Because the US took over the British great game. 
The great game was the operation of the British Empire from the middle of the 19th century up until essentially the 1950s and 60s, where the British were pushing policies of geopolitical provocations, wars, and conflicts, the clash of civilizations, as it became known, for the purpose of defending the British Empire. But when the British became too weak militarily and financially to sustain it, they handed it over to the United States through such operatives as the Dulles brothers and others, the, the friends of Prescott Bush and the Harriman interests and the Rockefeller interests in the United States. And they took over the British Empire, but continued to have the British not only as partners, but as coordinators, as the so-called brains behind the policy, because it was a British policy. And part of that was the creation of the Zionist state of Israel, using the sympathy from the extermination of Jews in the Holocaust to create a murderous state in the, the Middle East on behalf of British interests, on behalf of the imperial interests. And we've seen 75 years now of ethnic cleansing against the Palestinian population, which is continuing at an accelerating rate under the current Netanyahu government, but has the support of almost all the political leaders in Israel. This is totally different from the United States that emerged from World War II under the leadership of Roosevelt, then Eisenhower, who warned against the military industrial complex, and John Kennedy, who was assassinated because of his attempt to establish a policy of detente with the Soviet Union and to break with the policies of the Eastern establishment. So maybe you're like me, you're tired of watching people like John Kirby, the spokesman for the National Security Council, or Matthew Miller, the spokesman for the State Department, lying day after day to a press corps, which is increasingly asking some tough questions, but not pushing them fully. They're defending the policies, not only of the US government, but of the Israeli government in its uh, genocidal attacks on the Palestinians. So where is the action to stop these crimes? Why will they not stop a crime when they say it's a crime? They say, oh, we're so sorry. We, we tell the Israelis to, to protect humanitarian concerns. Well, how does it protect the Palestinian population when you send 2,000 pound bombs to Israel, when you promise them new F-15 fighter jets, when you give them the artillery and the money they need to continue the extermination of the Palestinian population? Where is the morality in that? Where is the uh, adherence to international law? It's not there. And that's the problem we face. And this disrespect for the idea of real international law, for example, the UN Security Council resolution, which the United States is now saying was non-binding. Well, when resolutions have been passed in, in, in the previous times, did the US say they were non-binding? No, this is more of the same policy of imperial madness. And most importantly, none of these people are speaking for you or your interests or the interests of your children or the children of other nations that are under assault from these policies. Now, I, I'd urge you to watch the dialogue I had yesterday with Helga Zeppler-Rouche, where she took your questions and gave very precise and provocative answers designed to get you off your behinds to join with us to topple this establishment. Now, Helga zeppler Rouche epitomized the true statecraft, which was that of her husband, the late Lyndon LaRouche. And you'll hear from her a lot of discussion of the actual solutions to these crises, as opposed to the flamethrowers who are building them up to the point of putting us on the verge of a nuclear World War III. Now, finally, tomorrow is Friday. I'll be taking your questions and comments. If I've provoked you, either provoked you to, to ask questions or to rant at me, let me hear from you.
Send me your questions at harleysch at gmail.com, and I'll see you tomorrow.